Okay, we are on Daf Yutet Amud Bet. If you're following in the art school, that is 19B3. All right, look at that, look at that, amazing. <laughs> that must mean you're a tzaddik. <laughs> okay, do um, you see where we're starting? Tan Rabbanan. Um, it's, it's maybe seven, eight lines in the bottom. Ten lines in the bottom, right in the middle. Tan Rabbanan. Pamahat, alu ko Yisrael, l'regel Yerushalayim. There was one time where Am Yisrael all came up um, to, uh, to Eretz Yisrael, to Yerushalayim for the regel. What does that mean? Every holiday we have a mitzvah called Mitzvah Aliyah l'regel. Shalosh b'am Yishalayim, yereo ko zuchor echad p'nei Hashem elokecha. Three times a year, you have to come. Everyone needs to come, and they come and they bring the korbanot. There's, uh, you know, there's certain mitzvot like hakel, different types of things that they do on the holiday. Uh, everyone gathers. There's a there's a simchat bet on uh, on on Sukkot. They there's the laws of encircling the mizbeach and the azara. All different laws that are relevant when Am Yisrael comes up uh, to be ole regel. So all of Am Yisrael would go up. Everyone has to go. So everyone goes. So they did not have enough water to drink because of the, uh, the drought. Nagdimon ben Gurion went to one of the Roman uh, Gentiles, one of the Roman uh, non-Jewish uh, uh, masters. Amarlo, lend me 12 uh, uh, cisterns, is usually how they translate it, okay? Lend me 12 ma'ayanot, wells or cisterns of water, for all the people, all the Jews that are coming up for the holiday. And I will give you back 12 uh, wells of water. So the cistern, the, the first wells are smaller than the next? Or he was, he was even Same thing, trade? even oh, Stephen. Okay. Yeah. Here's the part, is what you're really looking for. And if I don't give it back to you on time, I will give you kikar kesef. I will give you twelve kikar is a large measure of of silver. lo zeman, and he set a time for it exactly by when he would have to pay the water. So just so we understand the the amount of money that is. So look at Rashi. Rashi says on this word, okay. Where is it? Yeah. They'll all be full. Uh, it, the rain will come and fill them up. It wasn't that he was going to give them back water. He was telling him that the rain will come and fill them up. And if not, you know, it's not talking about a well that has its own well source uh, or water source from the bottom. So the only way to fill them up is if it rained. And he told him, he's basically made him Effectively, it was a wager for the for the uh, Roman for the Roman man. Okay, and if not, then I'll give you uh, you know uh, twelve kikar kesef. Each kikar kesef is uh, something like uh, five or six thousand dinarim, yeah. right? Six thousand dinar, six thousand dinarim. So you're talking about uh, something like seventy. What is it? Seventy two thousand uh, dinar that he's that he's paying him if he doesn't if he doesn't uh, if he doesn't pay on time. The time came and and uh, the, the, it didn't it didn't uh, didn't rain. On the morning of the day that he had to pay, he told him, "Send me either the water that you owe me or send me the money." He wrote back to him, "I still have time in the day." The whole day is still mine until uh, until the sun sets. The day is not over. Our wager is not over. But Tzahoraim comes the afternoon. He sends him, Shagali, Shagali, Okay, it's already afternoon already. You know, what do you think? It's, nothing, it's, not, it's not coming. It's the sun in the sky. Send me, send me either the water or the money. I still have time uh, in the day. Now, already the sun... Is getting set, is setting. It's a late afternoon. Shageli ma'im o ma'ot yeshli biadecha. Same thing. Shalachlo adain yeshishu bayom. I still have time in the day, as the sun's going down. Liglega lav oto adon. Start laughing at him. 
Amar, kol ashana kula lo yaduk shamim. The reason why you needed to borrow all this money is because the whole year, rain didn't really fall. And now, between the time of Minha, as the sun's setting until sunset, you think, uh, you think it's going to rain enough to be able to fill it up? Fill it up. He went, this guy went to go have a bath, go a shower, get ready you know, the, to, to get uh, payday. Uh, until he came into, uh, you know, in his joyous uh, bath experience. So look at the, the contrast. He goes into the Beit HaMirhatz with big smiles. He goes into the Beit HaMikdash. When he's sad. The Gemara is trying to give you the contrast. Like the cash. What? Like the cash is ticket, right? Exactly. He went to punch his ticket. Nit'atef ve'amad betefilah. He, he wrapped himself in talit, okay, like a tatef betzitzit. The amad betefila, and he stood up and he prayed. Ribono shelolam, mess to the world. Galu yedu lefanecha ashlo lechod yasiti. You know that I did not do this for my own honor. Vidol lechvod bet abba siti. I didn't do it for the honor of my family name, i.e., my uh, when we say bet abba lechvod bet abba. So I'm a farhi. That's bet abba, right? So I didn't do it for my name. I didn't do it for the farhi's family name. No, I did it for you, for your honor. So that there should be water for the people that come to be Ole Regal. Because if there's not going to be water for the people who need to be Ole Regalim, you know, then, uh, then they won't come. Immediately, the whole sky became uh, filled with the clouds. There was 12 well, wells full of water, the Hotiru, and they were even uh, higher, okay, uh, until higher than they were when he took them. Interesting. The guy comes out. He comes out of Beit HaMikdash. When they met each other, He said, give me now the extra for the water that I put into your wells. Yeah. I know that HaKadosh Baruch Hu did this, you know, for you. Because uh, you, because of, you know, you asked them to. But still, I have what to say about this. Why? Because, because I should be able to take my money. Because the sun already set. When the rain came down, the sun already set. So these rains, they came down during my time. Okay? And he realized that the guy would have a court case. He'd be able to, take, he'd be able to uh, claim the money. Chazar, he went back inside to the Beit HaMikdash. He went back to the Beit HaMikdash. He said in front of him, Master of the world, Let it be known that in this world there's people that you love. Immediately the clouds dispersed and the sun shone. So illustrating that actually the sun had not yet set. All that there was was that the clouds were blocking the sun and it was indistinguishable whether or not the sun had set. At that time, the master said to him, this Roman governor, If not for the fact that the sun, excuse me, if not for the fact that the sun had pierced, come through the clouds, yeah, I would have been able to say, I would have been able to, to, uh, to extract the money from you in any court. Tana. Lo Nagdimon Shemo, his real name was not Nagdimon Ben Gurion, Ela Buni Shemo. His real name was Buni. Velama Nikra Shemo Nagdimon, why did he call him Nagdimon? She Nikdera Chama Ba'avuro. Because the word Nagdimon comes from the word Nikadra, right? I don't know why he would, should have been called Nikadrimon. <laughs> Right? He should have been called Nikadrimon with the, with the rich. I'm not sure why. 
Yet, if you take a look down at the bottom, you'll see in the in the note, in the number note, you see over there, yeah. Um, so there's a different girsa in the Gemara, Ben Hananel and the Bach. Nikdema means it uh, it went to the east. So the reason why this is better because then nik, nik, Nikdema and, nikadim, and Nakdimon are the same letters. According to the Girsa that we have in the Gemara, outside of Rabbeinu Hananel and the Bach, his name should have been called, as I said earlier, not Nakdimon, but Nekadrimon, because the word that we were relying on to change his name was Nikderachama Ba'avura. Okay, Tanu Rabbanan. The reason why we said that story is because we talked about the idea that not only do, do we need that the rain should uh, take care of the vegetables and the plants, but also, I only just realized this now, when you're writing, the oh, whole sorry. camera is shaking. No, it's okay. I'm not really sure what else to do. Maybe put it here. Yeah, you know what? Maybe put it on the chair. Yeah. No, here. Yeah. Put that down on the bottom. There you go. Is that going to stand? Yeah. No. <laughs> Is it, is it straight now? Mm-hmm. Perfect. Yeah, good? Okay. So, let's carry on. Tan Rabbanan. So, because we were talking about the fact that the plants and the trees have to be watered, but not only that, but also the wells themselves. Remember we talked about? Borot, Sikhin, and Ma'arot. So, therefore, we went from that to this story of the wells being filled with rain of Nagdimo Megurion. Tan Rabbanan. <clears throat> Three times do we have this experience where the chama was moved forward uh, for them. Now, interesting, before it says nikdera, and we had a, a machloket if the girsa was nikdera or nik, nikadema or nikdema. Here, it seems everyone agrees that the words are nikdema. So it means that it went, it stayed in the east. It didn't kind of uh, 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 go down. So the sun rises in the east and it sets in the west. So it stayed more to the east, Nikdema, okay? Moshe, Yoshua, Vinakdimo Ben Guyon. These three cases, we find that the sun stayed in the east, okay? So the Gemara says, Bishlema Nakdimo Ben Guyon, Gemara. That we know, as we know the story. Yoshua Nami Kira. Yoshua, also the Pasuk says, Dikhtiv, as it says in the Pasuk, Vaidom Hashemesh, Viyareach Ahmad. The sun was quiet. It didn't say anything, didn't move, didn't uh, express anything, like Vayidom Aharon. V'yareach Ahmad, and the moon stood. So in other words, the cycles of the, of the planets were paused. It says in the Pasuk, Ela Moshe Minan. Where do we know that Moshe also had this miracle happen to them? Which story that was Yehoshua that it didn't, the sun didn't say? When they were fighting and they were winning the war against uh, the people in, in, uh, in Eretz Israel. So the sun needed to stay in the sky so they could finish wiping them out and not have them escape into the darkness and regroup, okay? But how do we know? Where do we know? Ela Moshe Minalan. Amar Bialazar, Bialazar teaches, Atya Achel Achel. We have Gzera Shava. Same word appears in two different places. And Achel, Achel, how are you? Hazit. So sorry, welcome. Okay. <laughs> More than your steps, I think. Achel, achel. It says the word achel in two different places. Ktiv acha. It says over here, achel tet bachtecha. God says to Moshe, from now on, I'm going to begin placing your fear on all of the people. Achel. Uchtiv hatam. And it says over there, achel gadelecha. I'm going to begin to make you great. Hashem says to Yoshua. Right? So just by Moshe Rabbeinu, just like by Yoshua, Making him great meant that HaKadosh Baruch Hu did something like that for Yoshua. So too, also for Moshe Rabbeinu, we have a Shava teaching us that what Hashem said he would do explicitly for Yoshua, because the Pasuk says, Vayidom. Uh, so also, uh, we find, we, we understand that it also happened for Moshe Rabbeinu as well. Even though he said it to Moshe first, and then we learned it from Yoshua after? Correct. It doesn't, doesn't necessarily have to go. No. Shava does not necessarily need to be... Um, uh, Extra, uh, uh, expounded uh, chronologically. Rabbi Shmuel Ben Achman, he says, no, I have another pr- proof. Atya tet tet. From the words tet. What does it say, tet? K'tiv hacha achel tet pachdecha. God said to, to Moshe Rabbeinu, I'm going to begin placing your fear. Okay? 
says over there, Biyom Tet Hashem et Amori, on the day that Hashem put the uh, the Emori, uh, you know, uh, into uh, in, into in this battle. Okay, so this Gzera Shava, it's really much more exact if you think about it, because when you're looking at Moshe Rabenu Tet, fine, you're just telling me I'm learning it from the other place. But how do you know what to learn in the first Gzera Shava, Achel Achel? How do we know from that scenario that that's specifically the thing that we're communicating that was also going to be relevant by Yoshua, by, by Moshe? So by Yoshua, Yoshua says, God says, I'm going to make you great. But what element of Yoshua's greatness are we supposed to then learn through the Gzera Shava? Maybe Yoshua was a really great swordsman. So we should learn that, you know, in the Gzera Shava. The second Gzera Shava offered by Rabbi Shmuel by Nachmeni says on the day that Hashem put the Emori in the hands of the Jews, so that time was specifically the war where that miracle happened. So there the Gzera Shava is much more specifically tied to that miracle. Rabbi Yochanan, Amar, Rabbi Yochanan says, No, we learn it from the Pasuk itself. We don't need Gzera Shava. The Pasuk says, Moshe Rabbeinu, Asher Yishmu'un, Shimacha, Viragzu Vechalumim Peh, Mipanecha. Those that even hear your, uh, they hear that you're coming, and they, they're going to be, they're going to be terrified, they're going to start shaking. Ematay Ragzu Vechalumim Panecha. When will they start shaking and so afraid of you? B'Sha'ash Niktiba Luchama, Le Moshe. In the time that the sun stood still to Moshe. Now the question is, um, where in the world um, would, would, do we find from that pasuk, again, that the sun stands still. So this is one of those examples where the Gemara expected you to have the whole pasuk in your brain because clearly you're a big Tamil Chacham. <laughs> so let's look at the saw. You see Torah or Shalem? You see, yeah, you see? On the side of the Gemara over here? So over there, that brings, whenever you have a pasuk, and the Gemara brings like two words of the pasuk, he brings the whole pasuk, Okay. So let's look at the whole pasuk, and then this dirasha of Rabbi, of Rabbi Yochanan will make a lot of sense. Asher Yishmeun, you see it? Bet, hayom hazeh? Yeah. Hayom hazeh achel tit pachtecha v'yiratecha. On this day I will begin to place your fear and your uh, uh, awe on all the nations, under the whole heavens, they will hear of your of, uh, of your of those who speak about you, and they'll be terrified of you. So the Gemara is expressing, since it says, uh, on all, you know, on the, all the nations, it ties the nations that would have fear of Moshe and his reputation to those that are under the heavens, indicating that the reason why they were afraid of him is because of something that would, they would have noticed in the heavens. What would that have been? That would have been the fact the that when they fought against down. Moshe, the sun did not go down. Okay? So what Rabbi Yochanan is doing is he's saying, your Gizera Shava is, is, uh, is weak. Your Gizera Shava is better, but unnecessary. Because in the Pasuk itself, you already have an inkling that this is what uh, that this is what took place. Okay, <laughs> we start with the news. Vechen ear. I hope that's uh, someone from Instacart and not another person. Vechen <laughs> ear, and also a city. Shelo yadu alei geshamim, that uh, the rain did not fall on the city. Yeah, and then if you remember when the Mishnah brought that, the Mishnah also said. Uh, so I'm going to give rain to one city and to the other city, I'm going to make sure it doesn't. So, both, both cases are a kilala. Now, what does that mean? How do, how do we know that both of the, it seems like one city, Hashem's like, yeah, you're all G. Everything's good with you. No problem, you get rain. It's the rain. other city I'm upset at. But why in the world would we assume that both of those are leklala? Look at Rashi. Shtehen leklala. You see it? Maybe uh, 
uh, 10 lines from the top. Akrakai, on the Pasuk, it is referring to. On one city I'll cause it to rain. And one city I will, not, I, will, I will not cause it to rain. Both of them are for a curse. The one that gets a lot of rain, that ruins the, the crops. And the one that doesn't get rain, and therefore nothing grows because there's not, no rain. It's going... Back on the on the um, on the uh, on the cloud. Shehaav la bilshon nekeva dechtiv hine av kitana ki kafish or la olamayim. So, in both of these cases, Rashi is expressing both of them were were, were for a kilala. But why was it? Why would if one doesn't have, would you automatically assume the second one was getting too much? So that's exact. That's the point. That is the chidush of uh, of Rabbi Yudah Amarav. Now. Let's look back at the Mishnah for one second. The Mishnah that we read earlier when it describes this case of the two cities. So if you remember, the Gemara actually said, <clears throat> Rain doesn't fall in a specific city, it's specifically fast, yeah. so we don't cry. 19A. <clears throat> No, this is not the uh, Irachat. I think it's going back to the first Mishnah. Right? Here. V'chein ir shelo yada alea gishamim. A city that grain did not fall. D'chtiv imtati al irachat v'al irachat lo amtir. Right? That city fasts and uh, blows the shofar or prays, and all those around it, the cities that are wrecked right next to it, So remember, if the pasuk that we're referring to over here is telling you that I made it rain on one city and I did not make it rain on the other city, and then we just learned that that city has an obligation to fast and to pray out loud, to, to have the shofar. And the other city has a lesser obligation, i.e. fasting, but not the calling out, not the uh, the seder ta'aniyot that we already explain, explained. That means that that city also had something wrong with it. So Rashi is therefore saying, if that's the pasuk that you quoted to me, so it seems that one, one of the city has, no, has a problem and the other one has no problem. But that can't be because the Mishnah says that the other city... Is also fasting. But don't they call out on behalf of the, the, the brother? Because we learned that you can't, if one person is right. fasting or one person is doing this, you can't go out and celebrate. So you have pain for your brother. So then the, I think the answer to that would be then if that's the case, then all of Am Yisrael should fast. Because in terms of brotherhood, that's not governed by, by geographic proximity. So here, the fact that it's a one city next to another city, something's also wrong with, something's that. Also wrong with the other city. Ah, you see? And that's the pasuk that we're quoting specifically. Yeah, go ahead. But this is this is old times, so like it's not common if, if something's wrong with one city, not it's not necessarily known that uh, someone across the world would know about that, but the city next to it would. For example, if there's if there's a city that that has a problem, yeah, the city next to it would obviously know about that problem. That doesn't necessarily mean all of Am Yisrael would know about it, because they're across the world. Well, what about two cities over? Also, not necessarily. No. May, well, again, if the whole city next to it is fasting, right. then they would know. Okay. So, but in other words, the point I'm making is that, and and many times we already said that there are there are things that happen in one city that the whole of Am Yisrael fasts on. Right. So, like, right, we talked about having right. wild beasts, right. right? So, if that's the case, so you see that if something's happening in one place, then all of Am they had mechanisms for letting the Jew, the, you know, right. yeah, you know, sometimes we forget. Israel's the size of New Jersey. Right? Like, you know what I mean? It's not side to side. You're riding a horse from side to side. The width of Israel is a joke. It's also in the second Babel. So, like, it's not necessarily Babylon and and Israel are quite far from one another. That is true. However, we keep seeing that the Gemara is being mokim these Mishnayot Mm -hmm. in in Eretz Israel and the Braita in Babel, right? right? So, but, but either way, 
again, my, my point is not whether you would know it or not know it. The point is if we're limiting it to the city next to it, it might, that might in and of itself. Now, if you remember, Rash, Rashi on the spot did not tie himself to that pshat. Okay? Rashi did not tie himself to that pshat. And we'll come back to that in, in just a bit. Right? Rashi on the spot, when we learned the Mishnah, Rashi said, you know why the city uh, next to it fasts? Because when they don't have food, where does everyone come? There. To my city. Everyone comes to buy food in my city. What yeah. happens? Yeah. The, and oh, prices price rise. Price. So it's a it, we're we're linked in the the proximity actually links even if there isn't the kilala. So Rashi in the Mishnah was not was not necessarily going with that. Okay, so let's carry on. Let's yeah let's move on. Where are we? Hayita, hayita, Yerushalayim nida benehem. Yerushalayim was a nida amongst uh, all the nations. Amar Yuda Amar Yuda said in the name of Rav Libracha. So we just experienced a, a verse. And what did the verse seemingly say? One city had it good, one city had it bad. And what did we do with the good city? We turned it also bad. We took a positive pasuk and we made it negative. negative. Says the Gemara here, you look at this, Hayta Yushalayim Nida Benehem, it sounds like it's a negative thing. Amar Yudah Marav, Libracha, no, it's a bracha. Kinida, what does that mean? Kinida, Manida Yesh Laheter. Just like a nida, at a certain point in time, after the nida passes, she goes to the mikveh, she's able to reunite with her husband. So Yerushalayim also will eventually be fixed, just like in a nida. There are other things that you could have used as an expression, you know, that would have been unfixable. Now, again, you, what verse are you yeah, thinking? A widow, a widow Says the Gemara. Hayita. Mm-hmm. Right? She becomes, Yerushalayim is like a widow. It says ki almana that she was like a widow, but not hayita almana. She was actually widow. A woman whose husband travels overseas for business. Um, now remember, they didn't go for business for a day or a week. They went to business for a month, two months, years sometimes. Uh, and that's not even so far in the history. Even you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, you'd have husbands that would have to go and they'd go to work in another country for years. And the, the intention was to come back. So even though she's not almana, she's ki almana, because for all intents and purposes, she doesn't have a husband. Hashem says, I will also, I will have made you, nivzim means nivze, someone who's uh, uh, embarrassed, humiliated, ushfalim, and uh, very, very uh, uh, degraded. Amar Yehuda lebracha. No, it's a bracha. The lo mokmi minan lo reshi nahare velo gaziri pati. Why? What does that mean? Since the Jewish people were considered to be nivzim ushfalim in the eyes of their uh, captors, okay. So the 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 uh, the goyim they did not want to turn us into. Lo uh, reshi nahari. They didn't make us into people who were in charge of the rivers, right? And also not lo gazipatri, and not the uh, police officers or uh, officials in the in the mechanisms of government, because in either of those cases, those are people who are really uh, despised, the people who, t- who collected taxes on the river, the people who uh, uh, um, who had to execute the, you know the the orders of the kingdom. So since Jews had this. There was this perception about Jews that God gave them that, that they were nivzim, ushfalim. So therefore, the, the goyim never thought of making, putting them in those positions, which actually then saved them because of it. The Gemara then continues. HaKadosh Baruch Hu will hit, and it's referring to times of, uh, of different kilalot, of things that were going to happen to the Jewish people for uh, worshipping idols. So the Gemara says, and the fact that it says that God will hit the Jews, just like the reed uh, moves back and forth in, in, uh, in the water. the name of Rav, also Beracha. When uh, someone who loves you gives you a bruise, 
the na'atarot nishikot sone, but the uh, the when an enemy gives you a kiss, it's something that you can't trust because you know how the person treats you and how the person thinks of you from previous experience. Okay, so if a, if a, if a, if a friend gives you a patch, you know it's for a reason. If an enemy gives you a kiss, you also know it's for a reason. He's he's messing me over somehow. There's for sure an agenda. My dechtiv. On Friday night? Yeah. Oh, I say Mizmor Levin on Friday night. Ah, uh, no, no, on Shabbat, Shabbat, when we say Kiddush. Your, yeah, your staff and uh, and your uh, and your st- and your stick. Me. They comfort us. They comfort me. Fine. Yeah, excellent. So the Gemara over here says the the kane that when Hashem hits the Jewish people like a kane in the mind, that's a biracha. Why? Because when a, a friend, someone who loves you. Hits you, you know it's for a specific reason. Okay? Tova kilala shekilel achia shiloni et Israel. Better is the curse that achia shiloni cursed Am Israel. Yoten birachash birachan bilam harasha. Better than the bracha of bilam. Achia shiloni kilalan bekane. Achia shiloni cursed them with this uh, that we expressed about the, the kane, the reed in the water. Amale Israel, he said to the Jewish people, Vikashem and Israel, Kashayanu da Kane. Ma Kane ze omed bim komaim. Just like the Kane stands in a place of water, Vigiz o mahalif. And the, the bottom of this, uh, of the, st- the stalk of this, uh, of this reed, even if it gets, you know, cut off at the top, mahalif, it switches, it grows again. Visharshav mirubim, and it has many different roots. Vafilu kor chotch baolam baotanosh bot bo, and even if you have. You know, terrible, you know, hurricane winds across the face of the river or the lake, blowing it down. They don't uproot it because it has so many uh, uh, roots and they're under the water. Uh, rather, what happens to the reeds in the water when the wind comes? It just bends this way, it bends back, it blows this way, it blows that way. As soon as the winds stop, uh, go quiet, the kaneh stands up again in its place. So, so too Am Yisrael. So even though it says, and God will hit you like a reed in the, in the water, it's actually from Achia Shiloni, who, uh, uh, who was a Sadiq, uh, in, from, from his mouth, that kilala is a beracha. Aval Bil'am Arasha, Shibirchan Ke'erez, Bil'am Arasha said, no. He blessed them, they should be like, like trees, like cedar trees. That they should be like cedar trees on the water. A cedar tree doesn't stand in the water. If you chop it down, it doesn't regrow. It does not have many uh, different roots. And, uh, you know, the winds that come, they can't budge it. They don't, it doesn't move. But when you have a specific wind, uh, the strongest kind of wind, which is the south wind, um, those winds are capable of It's capable to uproot the, the tree, even though the Erez is the strongest tree, and uprooting it. Not only that, not only that, the reeds that they used to have that were growing in the, in the lakes, they would then use them as, as pens to be able to, to write. They would use them to make quills that would then be filled with ink and they could write Sefer Torah, Nevi'im, and Ketuvim. Okay? So you see that again, Achia Shiloni seemingly gives what seems to be a curse and actually it's a positive thing. Bilam Rasha gives a positive thing that the Ka'arazim Alemayim but actually, his biracha is something that we're not so happy with because it turns out to be less than uh, meritorious. Let's carry on on this concept. Tanur Rabbanan. 
A person should always be soft like a reed. Don't be hard like a cedar tree. What does that mean? Rabbi Elazar, the son of Rabbi Shimon, came from this place called Migdal Gedor. He came from the house of his rabbi. He was riding a donkey with Elas Vatanar. And he was. Uh, he was traveling, he was uh, spatzering, like they say. He was so full of joy. And maybe he started to feel a little bit gas, a little bit too, uh, too good about himself. Because he learned so much, a tremendous amount of Torah from his teacher. As he's on this donkey, riding along the water, thinking to himself how lucky he was, how happy he was, how proud he was about all the Torah that he learned. A person came along who happened to be incredibly ugly. He said to him, Shalom Alecha Rebbe. The guy says to the rabbi, Mr. Ugly Q, says to the rabbi, How you doing? Shalom rabbi. And he did not reply. He said, Reka. Reka means empty person. Kama mechoar oto ha'ish. How ugly are, are you? Oto ha'ish means that person. But it's a way of saying you. Shem akob ne irecha mechoarin kemotcha. Are all the people in your city as ugly as you are? Ready for this one? Amar lo, the ugly guy says, eni yodea, I'm not sure, actually. Ela lech ve'emo le'uman sha'asa'ani kama mechoar kelize sha'asita. Go tell the person that made me how ugly is the vessel that you fashioned that you made. Immediately the rabbi realized that he made a terrible mistake. He got down from the hamor and he bowed in front of him. And he said, I spoke, I answered you in an improper way. It's not right. Forgive me. I don't forgive you. Until you go to my creator, how terrible, how ugly is the vessel that you made. The rabbi is now following him on foot, leading his donkey, walking behind him, begging him uh, for forgiveness. The people of the city come out to greet the big rabbi. And they were saying to him, Shalom Alecha Rebbe, Rebbe, Mori, Mori, you know, peace upon you, shalom, our rabbi, our teacher. Amar lahem, lemi atem korin rebi rebi. Who are you calling rabbi? Amru lo lazeh, shemitei lacharecha, the guy is walking behind you. Amar lahem, ze rabbi al yiru kimoto b'israel. If this is what a rabbi is like, there should not be many of him amongst Am Yisrael. Amar lo, amru lo, excuse me, they said to him, mepnei ma, amar lahem, kach kach asal, this is what he said to me. Amar Amrulo, they said to him, Afal piken mecholosh, Adam galo betarahu. Forgive him anyway, because he is tremendous tamik hacham. Amar lahe, bishvilchem areni mochelo. On your merit, because you asked me to, I'm going to forgive him. Ubilvad shlo yeragi la'asot ken. Just on one condition, that he should not continue to speak in this way. Miyad nechlas rabbi elazah ben rabbi shimon. Rabbi elazah ben shimon went, and immediately he said a derasha, and he taught. Le olam he adam rach kane, ayek hashek ha'eres. Person should be soft like a reed. He should not be hard like a cedar tree. Lefikach zacha kane li tol himenu kulmus. Therefore, the reed had this merit that it should be, it should provide the quill for the pen. The chdobos have to have filin umezuzot that they should have uh, all these holy books written. From from the read. Now, the question itself, uh, the question is obvious on this whole Gemara, but this will end. Um, oh boy, I think we're late already. So let's just, uh, we'll call it uh, a day here. We'll, we'll maybe analyze the story next time. Right? Hazaku Baruch.